Well, good morning to you all. Today's Thursday again, Cornishman Day. Where's the week's going, eh? Anyhow, a bit miserable out there today, but I think it's going to be all right. It's going to clear up, and a drop of rain will do all the all the plants now shooting and coming on. The roses looking like got a bit of leaf and all. Looking looking to spring now. That's what the best is. Where's the time going? It's nearly middle of February already. So, anyway, I hope everybody's all right. Now I've got a couple of birthdays here. My nephew's birthday, Joe Joe Smitherum. It was his birthday yesterday. I hope you had a good day, boy, and enjoyed yourself. Um, wonderful, wonderful. And then. Tomorrow is another great dear friend of mine who does a lot for over there at the Philip Church, and he's an organist, you know, uh, David Philp, a uh, great friend. And just who have a lovely day tomorrow, I think. And now I've got a special birthday today. It's my friend, my great friend, Gary Collimore. And, uh, well, we became friends since he'd done a, I, I started doing a little bit of wood turning, but he taught me a lot. He's always there to support all of us there, and uh, he helps us quite a bit. And I want to say... Really, really uh, happy birthday to you, Gary, and uh, enjoy the day and hope that we'll be chatting again and wait for a meal again very, very soon. So uh, just enjoy it, boy. You're worth it. You're a wonderful man, wonderful man. You do a lot for everybody. i got to say that. Uh, now, I'm going to do a little um, dialect story here today by, by Herbert Lean again. Oh, it was some handsome day. The sun was setting and Feather was sitting out in the garden reading last week's paper. He'd a real, dearly love to read the dialect story, which is put in every week for the educated people. This week, a country man had wrote a letter to the paper against it. Pity maids he was and told the editor if he put any more of them in the paper, he wouldn't go into the free library and read them. Just then, on comes Spotty Jack. And seeing Pether in the front garden, open the gate, never closing, but sat down side Pether. Now, everybody knows Spotty Jack was a bit beckoned. So father kept his mouth shut about the gate. Then out comes mother with a plate of strawberries, sat down and asked Spotty Jack if he would like some. Oh, don't mind if I do, says he, as he took a handful, and could he trouble her for a glass of water? Mother fetched the water, and Spotty Jack commenced to eat the strawberries after he dipped each one several times in the water. What's the idea of that, asked Feather. Oh, you never know, says Spotty Jack, what germs and dirt are around around even what we to call fresh fruit i always do this it might even cost you your lives Sides, there is others to think about for the germs may spread and the whole village be dead in no time can't be too careful well i must be going up long says he as he took up the glass and drank the water shut the gate said feather to keep out the germs see the trouble is people don't stop and think I heard about a man yesterday who went down to the surgery and told the young woman he had gravel. You must see the doctor, says she. He had to take his turn and was examined, and the doctor said he could find nothing wrong. I know that, he replied, but I got the gravel out in the cart for the drive. Feather started reading the paper again. I see here a farmer had one of their new notices put up which read, Do it now. In less than an hour... Our, our the work boy come in and asked for more money. The gardener took home a sack of taters, the housemaid had a bath, and the farmer took down the notice. Nothing is like it used to be in the good old days, continued Feather. I can remember when I was young and going to school, we had to hark to what we was told. Now they don't know nothing and won't be told nothing. Our boy Richard Henry is as smart as you and me in most things, replied Mother. Here he is coming up the road, said Father. I'll give him a test, and I bet he won't know what to say. Now, boy, suppose I said to a year's twelve pennies, what, what would be the first thing you would do? Oh, count them, said Richard Henry, was the reply. Because you've made mistakes before. What do you mean by that, asked Feather, who was getting tasty. Well, you sold old, old Josie Coconut a dozen eggs. When he come back and told, told he ten of them was bad, you told him to ring back the two good uns, and you would replace them. Serve you right, remarked Mother. Some people don't like to hear the truth. Like when Mrs. James went and met the preacher, who said he was so glad to see her in chapel last Sunday. I always go when you're preaching, she replied. Oh, that is very kind of you. I suppose you like my sermons. No, I don't. But there's always plenty of room when you're preaching, and I like a good seat. Kettle is boiling, said Feather. Let's have a cup of tea. This is just a little quick one. The doctor said, look, I'm not joking. You must pack up all this smoking. 
You were spared a kiss as I have seen. You must be full of nicotine. Still, from now on, it's up to you. I've merely told you what to do. But if you're wise, pay heed to me, or you'll puff your way to purgatory. Oh, the doctor put it very clear, and I felt a stab of panic, fear. I felt more than a bit depressed, so I promised him I'd do my best. With his warning as my guide, I did my best. Oh, my God, I tried to shoulder, carry my smokeless cross. But I was hopeless, hopeless, lost. Without me roll, without my fag, without the morning's first deep drag. I was in a state, I'm telling you, couldn't find things for me to do. I nibbled my nails, sucked my thumb, got the wads of chewing gum. Had the shakes, developed the twitch, started scratching where I didn't itch. Guzzled grub, gaff quarts of ale, but twarn't no use, I had to fail. Yes, all that suffering was all in vain, cause I started smoking once again. I knew. I think of the doctor, the words he spoke, when I cough in the mornings, fit to choke, when he clears my throat and it's black as coke. I've made my choice, and when I croak, well, I'll go out in a cloud of smoke. Have a nice weekend.